the string that Brenna had come up with is the centerpiece of our mattress. But we wanted to combine the string with a bunch of materials that had already proven their metal in Europe or mattress design is just something customers are a lot more discerning about. PBDE, the common flame retardant that is used in a lot of materials that you find in homes in America, has long been outlawed. It was found to be uh, unhealthful for people that are around it. You know, it caused thyroid dysfunction. It causes developmental issues for children. Once that was dis discovered in Europe, people ended up leaving, uh, wanting this out of their mattress, wanting it out of, out of products that they encounter every day in their home. So for us, it was important to take advantage of all the things that were learned in, in Europe and that were that we could make part of a mattress and make a more healthful product for people here. We're looking for PBDE-free materials. We were looking for something that could give a better sleep result than common bedding foam that people are using here in the U.S. Common bedding foam is typically produced with injection gases. You hear people talk about how their mattress is off gas, how they smell, you know, how they dip really easily. Yeah. So one of the things that we decided was to, again, look to Europe, where, where people have been using HR foam, a highly resilient foam that's made with water vapors and the change in air pressure. It's a different production method. It produces a foam that is much more durable, that is pre-crushed, so it gives you a much higher quality product. It gives you a much more stable foam than one that's not bound to dipping. As another side effect of this HR foam, it is inherently flame retardant. At every corner where we could, we looked for materials that would serve the purpose of creating a better end product. You know, so we had all of this information, some of it from our background, a lot of it because, because Reiner had worked in the industry in, in Austria. The way how we wanted to prototype was we went to a European mattress manufacturer with a family history of making mattresses for 100 years. He helped us produce the prototypes. So we prototyped in Europe, taking advantage of all of the materials that were available there. And we imported the mattress, the first prototypes here. And eventually, you know, to fast forward a little bit, eventually we realized that when we want to make, set up our production here, and when we want to make mattresses that can be customized by, by, by people who are made in, Europe, uh, in American sizes, we would be much better off producing them actually in the U.S. One of the key triggers of, of allergies, and in America about 50 million Americans suffer from allergies and asthma, is dust mite droppings. The food source for dust mites is basically sweat, it's uh, dandruff, it's old skin. So with our mattress covers, what you do is, and we are the only ones in, in America you can do that, you take them off. The reason why we make it in two parts is because some people have a small washing machine. Another thing is our mattress covers you can wash actually in hot water. Very important because that's the only way how you can get rid of uh, dust mite droppings. Also, if you look at the cover, it has a really smooth and flat surface. Very important because button for dusting is the worst thing you can do because in all this nukes and crannies, that's where the dust mites lay their eggs. So you, you, you cannot clean that. So right now in 2012, we have 50 million people suffer from allergies and still the mattress is the dirtiest object in our household, except ours, of course. We literally can reduce allergies. We really can do that. But we literally can help people with their back pain, especially if they of lower back pain. I mean, around I think 65 million Americans suffer from back pain. It's the second most reason why people go to doctors, for example. This industry here has it wrong, totally wrong. We need this movement, we need the air circulation, and, and we're the only ones right now you can actually uh, offer that. One thing that we decided to do, and you can probably tell from all that we've said about the, the careful sourcing from the, from the materials, and it, it wasn't easy to get all the materials together and to think, think of every ingredient that we put in, into it, you know, because everything has, has an effect. Everything has a reason for being there. Obviously, we want to keep this up. We're not going to rest on our laurels and say, no, we've come up with a perfect product. We're not going to move it one inch. Every time when there's, the, for example, look at our look at our foam. We want to be a very green product. 
And over the course that we've been making it here, the foam has changed. It's still obviously a highly resilient foam because that's just the high, highest quality item we can come by. But technology has changed that you can incorporate a higher percentage of renewable resources that are turned into foam. You can make foam today with higher, uh, higher percentages of soy, with higher percentages of other renewable resources. So the foam we use will always have the highest percentage possible of renewable resources without jeopardizing the quality of the end product. You know, so we always keep an eye on it. And there are a couple of things that we're not going to quite let out of the bag now, but that we have our eyes on that we are, of course, are going to incorporate. You know, you don't go through all this struggle. And it, trust me, it's been, a, it's been a struggle and it's been a lot of work. You don't go through all of that and in the, in the end jeopardize the entire thing by just saying, okay, fine, well, yeah, we're going to do shortcuts. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. It can be so-so, it can be okay, it doesn't have to be great. We wanted to come up with something that is great, that solves people's problems, that lets people finally sleep better. That was our mission, that's what we wanted to achieve, and you know, why give up while you're halfway there? There are so many mattresses that, that are discarded every year, and every, every queen-size mattress gives you about 35 cubic feet that are added to America's landfills. If we want to take a crypto cradle approach to our product design and product development, we do need to concern ourselves with the fact of what's going to happen with the mattress in its afterlife. People don't talk about mattresses. You spend a third of your life asleep, you know, how you sleep has an enormous impact on, on the performance that you bring forth during the day, you know, and how you are able to deal with your day. But people consider mattresses a really boring product. We would love for mattresses to be something that people consider a lifestyle object and something that doesn't get just swept under the covers.